Hi guys, here's your video on Law of Cosines. Law of Cosines is another method that you can use to solve triangles that are not right triangles. Um, for Law of Cosines, you have two scenarios that you would use um, this formula with. You have your side angle side and then your side side side. If you have side angle side, you want to find the third side first using this formula over here, Law of Cosines. And then you're going to find the smallest angle using Law of Sines. For your triangles that give you all three sides, you want to find the largest angle first using law of cosines, and then the smallest angle using law of sines. Um, so for law of cosines, you do have to go in a very specific order in terms of finding your angle measurements, especially if you're using law of sines afterwards, because law of sines, when you find an angle measurement, there can be two solutions. So when you find the smallest angle, um, using law of sines before you find uh, the middle angle, that guarantees that the smallest angle is going to stay acute, and then you don't have to worry about finding the second angle measurements. Um, so here's the formula that you're going to use for law of cosines. Um, the key with setting it up is that you have the side and its corresponding angle over here, and then what you do with the other two sides in terms of B and C, um, the order for that doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go ahead and use law of cosines to solve a triangle. So solve triangle ABC given that side A is 5, B, C is 8, and beta is 77 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch my triangle. We don't know alpha, but we do know beta, which is 77 degrees. We know side A is 5.0, and side C is 8.0. So we're missing gamma and we're missing side B. So we have the side angle side scenario. So side angle side, you want to find your missing side first. So we're going to go ahead and solve for side B. By the way, you can't use law of sines for this because for law of sines, you need to have an angle and its corresponding side, which we don't have yet. So that's an indicator that you would want to use law of cosines. So I'm going to use this side to start off the formula. So I have B squared equals my other two sides squared. Order doesn't matter just because you're adding minus two times your other two sides and then cosine of your angle. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take that and plug it into my calculator. Make sure you're in the right mode. Um, we are dealing with degrees so you want to be in degree mode. So I have 5 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 5 times 8 cosine of 77. And that gives me 71 and then square root. I'm going to round to the nearest tenth since these are to the nearest tenth. So that gives me 8.4. All right. So now we know that this side is 8.4 we need to start to solve for our angles. Now with our angle measurements, you want to solve for the smallest angle next because you're going to use law of sines and with law of sines you might have two solutions, but as long as you work with the smallest angle measurements, um, you would only have one solution because that's going to guarantee that that angle measurement is acute. So my smallest angle is opposite my smallest side, so my smallest angle is going to be alpha. So I'm going to go ahead and use law of sines to solve for alpha. So I have sine of alpha over 5 equals sine of 77 over 8.4. So now we have our angle and its corresponding side, which means you can use law of sines. Uh, cross multiply, so 5 times sine of 77 divided by 8.4. That gives me 0 0.5800. Going to do the inverse sine, and that gives me 35 degrees. Your degrees were going to round to the nearest whole just because the one that was given to us was to the nearest degree. And then finally we can solve for gamma by taking 180 minus 35 minus 77 degrees. So gamma is 180 minus 35 minus 77 which is 68 degrees. So we solved the triangle, we have all three sides and now we have all three angles. Uh, now we have this triangle. We don't have any angles, so we're missing alpha, beta, and gamma, so we're going to have to solve for all three angles. Side A is 90, side B is 70, 
and side C is 40. So when you're going to use law of cosines to solve for an angle measurement, you need to start with the largest angle first. So your largest angle is opposite the largest side, so we're going to be solving for alpha. So the side always starts off the formula. So I have 90 squared equals my other two sides squared minus 2 times my other two sides and then cosine of the angle that I'm solving for which is the corresponding angle to the 90. So that gives me 8100 equals these two I'm going to go ahead and combine so 70 squared plus 40 squared gives me 6500 minus 2 times 70 times 40 which is 5600 cosine of alpha. Please do not make the mistake of combining these two numbers because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get cosine of alpha by itself. So don't forget about order of operation. So we need to move the 6500 to the other side. So that gives us 1600 equals negative 5600 cosine of alpha. Divide both sides by negative 5600. That gives me negative 0.2857 equals cosine of alpha. We're going to use the inverse cosine and that gives me 107 degrees. All right, so now that we've solved for the largest angle, we want to jump to the smallest angle using law of sines. So I have my angle and its corresponding side, so I can set up my law of sines using my angle. So sine of 107 degrees over its corresponding side equals, we want to solve for the smallest angle, which just so happens to be the 40, or no, the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side, which was 40. So we want to find gamma next. And as you can see, my triangle over here is not um, accurate with the side lengths, but that's fine. Okay, so we're going to cross multiply. So I'm doing 40 sine of 107 divided by 90. That gives me 0 0.4250. I can do the inverse sine, and that gives me 25 degrees. And then finally for beta, I'm doing 180 minus uh, 107 minus 25 degrees. And that gives me 48 degrees. So we now have all three angles. All right, triangle is solved. Next thing we are looking at is finding the area of any triangle. Usually when we're finding the area of a triangle, we do one half the base times the height. So here's the height, this is your base. So your area is one half base times height. Um, but there is a way to solve for the area of a triangle when you're not given your height um, over here. So if you're given an, if you're given two sides and the angle between them, so for instance, we have side B, side C, and you have the angle measurement between them. You can find the area using this formula. So this is a side angle side scenario. If you're given uh, all three sides, so a Heron's formula you use for side, 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 um, you can find the angle measurement using this formula over here. So approximate the area of the triangle when side A is 2.2, B is 3.0, and then gamma is 37 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that out just to see what it is that we're dealing with. So my side A is 2.2, side B is 3, and then gamma is 37. So we have um, a side angle side, which means we can go ahead and use this formula to solve for the area. So that's one half um, times my two sides times sine of the angle between them. So 0 0.5 times 3 times 2.2 sine of 37. And that gives me 2.0 uh, centimeters squared, since it was centimeters. 
All right. A triangular field had size length, side lengths 125 yards, uh, 160 yards, and 225 yards, approximately the, approximate the number of acres in the field. So since we're given all three sides, we want to use Heron's formula. So Heron's formula is going to be the square root of S times S minus one of the sides times S minus another side times s minus the third side, and s is going to be one half times all three sides added together. All right, so I have 0.5 times 125 plus 160 plus 225, which gives me uh, 255. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of that and plug it into my calculator. So 255 times 255 minus 125 times 255 minus 160 times 255 minus 225. That gives me a really, really large number. I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of that. That gives me 9,720 yards squared. Um, but the original question was asking for acres. So I'm going to go ahead and take my yards and divide it by 4,840 to figure out my area in acres. That gives me two acres. All right, so that does it for a law of cosines. See you in class.